Alright guys, welcome back to another Amp Critter tutorial. Today what we're going to be doing is covering how to debug uh, Amp Creator. So there's a couple different ways that you can debug. And one is if you have errors like this. So in console, you'll be able to see if there's any errors. Uh, this sometimes happens when you're in game and something happens or if the uh, mod element uh, doesn't compile properly. So looking at the, uh, the yellow text here, uh, we can see that there are a few different procedures that we have in our mod that are basically uh, set up that way. Uh, the numbers at the end are the exact line that they're on uh, that is causing the issue. So if we click on it, uh, you can see it highlights the um, part of the code that is actually causing the problem. So we can kind of figure out whereabouts in that uh, from our script that we have it. Now, sometimes if it's a mod element or something, it might be a little bit harder to debug, but um, generally it's in the same uh, order that the actual script is um, basically running. So for example, in this case, it's this line right here. This uh, comes in a certain position when it's actually doing that. So we can actually search up this uh, procedure and then we can see where um, the debugging part is like having the issue in. So I have the procedure right here. So we'll open this up and then we can find out whereabouts this particular issue is causing the problem. And that would be right on this line right here. So it's the activated part right here. So I know that exactly what block that it's causing. Uh, sometimes they have key little notes in them, like values and stuff. In this case, it's activated, all lowercase. So that's going to be showing up in the procedure itself. So again, um, you kind of have to understand a little bit of what parts are uh, causing which but there are usually key indicators like things like exact values like strings and stuff so it's this one right here that little uh, variable that's being passed over from the um, thing here that's causing the issue um, yeah so there's sometimes more than one ver one procedure that's causing the issue if you're calling another procedure then chances are it's going to point to the part that is calling like that is um, calling the procedure that is the issue. So it might ha show more than one procedure that is causing the problem itself. So keep that in mind when you're actually debugging. Um, all right, so there's those, and I'm just basically going ahead and uh, opening up that procedure. As you can see, it's calling that particular procedure into question, which calls that one. And there's a few other uh, things that it shows us exactly what line. So it's this one right here. And it's just the call block that is basically calling right here. So that's basically it. Um, all right, so that's basically it. There's another procedure here that we can take a look at. It shows us what line, and I have to find it, but um, let's just take a quick look uh, for it. It would be under here, and this trigger right here. This is the main trigger for the entire event. So most likely this is going to be the outer one which is causing issues. So we know that it's exactly on this line right here. So we can kind of figure out with the if statements where about that is going to be. So if we open up this, uh, we can kind of see that it's somewhere in here. So it's right where the call block is in, that, in this case. So that's basically it for that part of debugging. It's not too, too complicated. You can click on the procedure, the yellow text, It'll open up the procedure and you can kind of figure out whereabouts um, the script is uh, based on the like, things that are in the script itself. So in this case, um, we have a string of text right here and we can kind of figure out from that uh, where it boats it needs to be. All right, so um, that doesn't really fix the how it's getting fixed, but you'll have to, it'll help with actually figure out what's causing the problem and then you kind of have to figure out what to do from there. But um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, again, the the numbers on the after the colon are the exact line number. So that's really handy to know. And I don't think there's too much more to cover on that particular part. Um, the procedure name will be the exact name as your procedure itself. So 
In this case, it will be the same part. Now, I'm not going to actually fix the error in this because I actually already fixed the area, but um, just kind of shows you uh, how to kind of figure out what part is causing the issue, which can be a really handy tool for debugging and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's too much more to show on that part. So there is another way that you can actually de debug. There is um, a print, bo print block that you can actually use to get outputs of certain values. This can be handy when a particular part isn't running properly, but you might not have specific errors. So in this case, we're going to create a condition that might not return true under certain conditions, and it might return a value using the print block uh, in console. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just create the condition uh, for a certain value. So I'm gonna test if there's two players on the actual world which should not happen in the test environment so that condition will always fail and it needs to be raining and yeah, currently day in the world itself and then i'm just going to be setting a simple procedure just to set the spawn point to a location because we only have the world variable so we can use that in order to kind of set the bypass the x y and z coordinates and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just print out the all of the entire condition um, and then we're going to need kind of text to kind of indicate what it's going to be so we can put it directly on create text and then we can create a variable string and sometimes you want to have spaces and stuff just at the end so it makes it a little easier to read I forgot to do that with these but um, in this case, you might want to also add a debugging variable. Uh, well, this can be um, done for the world or map, and then you can basically run a exact procedure um, only when this variable is true. It makes debugging a lot easier. You can run it through a command even. And then if you want uh, people to debug things and stuff like that, you can set it up in a way that it will only be enabled when it's um, in debug mode so it'll print out messages to console all right so basically what I'm doing here is I'm just updating the name so I know what everything is because some of these things are going to be returning true or false and uh, they're all going to look the same so having unique text really helps all right so in the console I'm just going to clear it quickly and it's going to automatically print out uh, based on the condition or trigger that I used and it should print it out right here so Right about here you'll see your variables saying true and whatever you typed which is another good reason to actually type something in for the variable in this case our um, procedures are running false and then the the time of day is true raining is false and then our players is false as well so there's two failed conditions for this to be met that's why the procedure didn't run so that's basically how you can debug really easy with uh, the print block and it will always print out to console so you can easily figure out things like that and it's going to be accurate values as well anyhow if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out